Welcome, everybody. I'm Doug Chilcott. Uh, welcome to uh, the Open Translation Lounge here at TED Global 2013 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, this is one of several sessions we're doing all week, inviting TED speakers and hosts to the Translation Lounge to uh, talk about their talks or their sessions um, with a, an audience from around the world uh, of translators, both here in Scotland as well as others joining us via Skype. And today's session, we have Eric Hirschman, who just left um, his session. Um, here on site, we have Khalid from Morocco. <laughs> I should know you guys. Um, Anwar from Sudan and Bandi from the Congo. Joining us via Skype is David from Tanzania. Welcome, David. I'm Anya from Slovenia, and Falguni from Bangladesh. Welcome to all of you. So we'll just start with the session, Eric, amazing session. Talk a little bit about your, uh, your vision for the session and, and how it came together. Yeah, you know, so um, Adrian and I, we, we were looking to, to do a session that really talked about that there's actually a lot going on in, in, in Africa and Middle East and Asia that, that a lot of the world doesn't know about, but it has, is going to have a huge impact in the years ahead. So we were looking for the people who could tell those stories uh, in a good way, right, in a different way. And it even came out in the music where we were saying, okay, so people expect a certain type of music, right, because you're coming from Africa. Let's do something that's not expected here, right? And so Forces of Change is really about talking about there's a lot of unrest and craziness happening around the world, a lot of disruption. Africa and the Middle East, quite frankly, are leading it in, 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 in Asia, are leading in a lot of the changes that are happening. What will it look like 10 years from now? We don't know, but we think that Africa, Asia, and Middle East are gonna have a huge impact and might be uh, part of the solution to the problems that we face endemically around the world. I'd like to know what was your impression of the session? Uh, the session was really a great one. It was so positive that one, you know, I feel proud of Africa and looking forward to seeing, you know, what will happen in the, the, in the near future. And also it gives you, you know, the other side of the coin that people won't expect to come out of Africa. You know, the, me personally, I'm so proud of this guy, Eric, and what he does in, in Kenya. And uh, in the near future, I'm going to Kenya to observe, you know, the Oshahidi, the IHAB, and take back to Khartoum. Instead of, you know, uh, going to the United States or, you know, into Europe, to, to learn. Now I have something inside Africa, since nearby me, where I can learn from. How about you, Bandi? Well, I, f I did find that it was uh, very powerful because um, I would say it's very rare that Africa uh, is spoken the way it was spoken about today. Um, you know, full of hope, but also full of opportunities, uh, showcasing what Af Africa is already doing, uh, the development, the role technology is playing, uh, and really showing that actually there are certain things that the world can learn from Africa in terms of technology, not just the other things, but in terms of technology. I thought that was very powerful. And it was also good to, um, to, to listen to Ndambiso, uh, you know, looking at another way of looking at Africa and, and even doing the development of Africa. Uh, I did find that very powerful and, you know, it's, you know, it was really a celebration of, of Africa and the music was was also equally yeah. as good. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I want to bring someone in from Skype. Uh, David from Tanzania, um, wondering your impressions of the session today. Yeah, but what Eric was saying that there's so much disruption happening in Africa, the African continent, and uh, of course in other parts of the world as in Asia, I think, I think true, yeah. And if you can have a better way of representing uh, all the efforts that are, all the efforts and initiatives that are happening in Africa, yeah, I think it will be a very good thing. So um, one of the things that we were trying to do, and, and you know, there's, there's two things that you can tell about the story of Africa, right? There's one which is the, just the narratives, the anecdotes, the stories of interesting stuff. Um, and you, get, you do actually see more of those happening today. But what was really important for us was to bring on some of the people who really do the research and understand the science about what's going on behind the, the, the numbers. Uh, and so to have two economists up there was very important for us to say, actually, this isn't just a story, a feel-good story about a couple things happening. There's a trend here. And, and uh, there's, there are indicators that you can't ignore. And uh, so I had to have that just lay the foundation to say, hey, this is legitimate stuff. Yeah. Colleague, we haven't heard from you yet. Any, a question for Eric or a reflection on the uh, session? Sure. Um, for the session, the session I, I really enjoyed it as an African. Although we're not really considered as African, we're more uh, categorized as Arabs, the Arabs of Africa. What's going on in Sub-Saharan Africa is not reaching us. I mean, uh, what's going on in Europe is far from us, and Sub-Saharan Africa is 
is separating itself from, from north of, uh, of Africa. So just recently we have started the first hackerspace in Morocco and we are, the, the trend is uh, catching up, but it's, it could have been faster and uh, smoother if Sub-Saharan Africa has actually helped us to do that. So I, I'm hoping for more collaboration between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa and not categorizing Africa as Africa, but only speaking about Sub-Saharan Africa instead of the whole of Africa. Yeah. But, but I think that also shows the diversity of Africa. Um, and, and, you know, yes, you can actually uh, get into that trap of, of thinking that Africa is, is, is the same everywhere. Uh, for instance, uh, although Africa is rapidly developing, there are also areas of Africa where development is not reaching. Right. For instance, the Congo, you know, a terrible uh, problem there. Uh, but it is true that when you look at Africa globally, it's rapidly developing, but there are still pockets where it's really lagging behind. Yeah. And, and it, it's also true that sometimes there is not a strong connection between certain parts of Africa. For instance, right. what you've just highlighted, you know, the Maghreb and, and Sub-Sahara Africa, mm -hmm. South Africa also has a different kind of uh, flavor. system and flavor, different kind of technology. Kenya has also, you know, a different kind of hub, businesses. Uh, and it, ingenuity, you know, all those things. So, it, yes, I think uh, to some extent you're right. But although, I think in the session we also had uh, um, Mustafa who yes. addressed kind of uh, another uh, dimension of Africa, which I, I did find was really, you know, well, well thought because uh, it helped us understand the complexity of Africa, the, the political uh, growth of Africa, uh, which I did find very positive and right. hopeful. Yeah, I'd say what Bundy is saying is, is exactly right. There's, I think that you know there might be th some things on the technology or entrepreneur front that would be really great to see up in the the northern part of Africa from some of the sub-Saharan African uh, states. But you know, there's some stuff happening politically in the north that we wish would come south. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> then let's collaborate. Let's yeah. exchange. You, know, you, you should export it. <laughs> But there's something else interesting. You're talking about the first hackerspace in Morocco, right? And so there's a trend now that's been happening over the past couple of years where we're seeing these tech shops, tech spaces, tech labs, hubs, whatever you want to call them, uh, proliferating. You know, if you go back even three years ago, there was a handful, three, four tech, you know, incubators and spaces across the, across the whole continent. Mm -hmm. Now we have 50 plus. Uh, and some of these are just kind of co-working or, or, or hot desking spaces. Others of them are incubators, and others of them are are hacker spaces where people are actually making uh, physical stuff with other with big tools. And and it's this kind of uh, diversity, and even the tech shops and the tech spaces of Africa that I think is so fascinating. And the growth and the acceleration that will come because they exist uh, is is yet to be seen. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, the idea of, of, of Africa being just, I, I think we talk about it in this, in this aggregate in the way that we never do with Europe. I mean, Europe actually has, I mean, no one says Europeans and how are Europeans doing this? And actually, which invites me to invite Anya to talk about this idea of a collective continent having a mindset. Um, Africa doesn't have one either. It has very distinctive cultures and languages in the same way that Europe does. So Anya, could you reflect on that observation? I know that where I come from, Slovenia, there are a lot of startups, but mainly they're focusing on the US not that much creating a European startup culture or anything like that. But I'll, I really love the session and it brought something, uh, uh, a new perspective to looking at, at Africa because I love the Toby Shapshock's uh, interpretation of the map, the night map. Because uh, really innovation doesn't come from conformity and if you're challenged with real problems, you begin to think, to innovate, to be creative. Uh, and I think that's a really good point for Africa uh, to be innovative. Um, but for Europe, I guess we're a bit too conformative. We have uh, a lot of good things uh, that maybe keeps us from tackling with the real problems and just looking for the next big app for iPhone or Android. Uh, one thing that uh, Eric has started the, the session with is that the troubleshooting aspect of the African you know, right. average. Uh, the day before I come here, we had a lunch with the British, uh, the British ambassador in Khartoum. And then uh, he asked the, the, you know, the people, who, 10 things that every British diplomat should know about Sudan. And I shared him, uh, with him the, you know, the, the fact that everyone in Sudan is a troubleshooter. <laughs> yeah, you have you know, very unique problems you have to overcome. You know, electrical cut, water cut, and then you know, car problem and malfunctioning here, you go to the hospital. So 
it's very complex and you have to overcome. And you will complain forever. But the only solution for you is to overcome. So whenever you go outside the continent, you will become super, super uh, effective to the community that you join, right? The, the challenge is, I guess, is to get back from where you are and to bring back to the, the, the local community. And I guess the TEDx, the TEDx phenomena is reflecting now what's happening there, right? Yeah, more bottom-up approach. Yeah. 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 And especially, I have to say, the open translation, because, you know, people like um, my family who are in the Congo, um, they, they can't hear English. And most of the uh, conversation, um, or many conversations are happening in English, and they're missing out. But with the open translation, they are able to follow it. In fact, because my, I've got a, you know, I, I spoke before, and, and it was on TED.com, it, it allowed them for the first time to understand uh, what I, I said at, 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 uh, at TEDx, and which thankfully was, was uh, featured on TED.com. Isn't it crazy that you have to have your mom and dad see your talk online before they understand what you do? <laughs> it's like, it's a, this is a human problem. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, 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 but you see, it was translated in French, yeah. whereas before it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, and that's something to be celebrated. Yeah. Because yeah. it connects them to an outside world, which maybe before they, they were not able to connect to. Yeah. Thanks you to know, the French it's, translators. You know, yes. Yeah. So, you know, thank you to all the French translators yeah. out there. <laughs> And, and, and hopefully there would be also some uh, um, sort of local languages, right. like Lingala, like Swahili, you so, know. So this is actually an interesting thing. My parents were linguists. They mm -hmm. were translators, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's what we were doing in South Sudan. Yeah. That's what we were doing, you know, in North Sudan and everything. Um, and so, but it's actually really true. There's, there's over 2,000 languages in Africa. Mm. Um, and the big languages, you know, the Arabic, the French, the English, uh, you know, there's Swahili. A, Swahili to a certain level, yeah. um, you know, are already done, right? But, you know, getting something in your own mother tongue, it, 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 it takes it so much further, it makes it so much more, um, you really hear things then, yes. right? And so the, the idea of an open translation project for TED is, is a fantastic one. I think the mission now should be to say, okay, we've done some of the big languages. Let's drive down. There's a lot of languages out there that still need some, need some work. That would be fantastic because the quality of the talks that you get at TED translated into very local languages and teachers will be able to just, you plug it in yeah. and they're able to follow it free. It connects you in a way that maybe, you know, 20 years ago would have been yeah, impossible. unheard of. Yeah. And you couldn't have even imagined that would have been possible you know, to get access to that kind of uh, information. Wonderful. Actually, we're going to have to end. Actually, we are, we're running out of time. The next session's starting. So thank you, Eric, for joining us. Thank you, all of us. Uh, thank you, all of you, for joining us here as well. And there's one more session tomorrow morning after the first session. So I hope to see you then. Goodbye. Okay.